And joining us in studio to talk about this is legal practitioner Libros Oshoma. Also joining us live is Achike Chude, who is a political analyst. He will be joining us uh, very soon. Good morning, Libros. Yeah, good morning. And it's good to have you this Monday morning. Monday morning duties. Monday, Monday morning duties. Yes, we're always happy to have you. Now, what's your thought? This comparison between our system of political um, ideology, if you like, and that of the United States, even though it looks like we are practicing the same. Yeah, is there any basis for comparison, really, apart from the fact that um, we have political parties? Um, there's apart from the name political parties, mm -hmm. there is um, there's nothing. Um, the comparison ends there, simply there. And uh, that's why you hear, if you hear people in America talk about um, political, it doesn't just end with ideologies, also permeates, you, you know, the ideology permeates the family structure. You hear somebody tell you, I grew up a Republican, you know, I've been, I've, I've imbibed the Republican culture, you know, all my life. And, and so, you you would you would imagine how such person would um, now begin to having grown up with you know Repub republican culture and they say you don't learn learn how to use left hand at old age mm -hmm. you imagine how that person would just one day you you change know automatically. change automatically but um, that said uh, there was a time also that um, even though the current president of america donald trump is um, he toyed with the idea of um, you know, um, the, the being a Democrat uh, at some at his early age, uh, unfortunately, uh, today he's a Republican. Mm -hmm. And so that's what seems to be, you know, the only basis for, for comparison. So cross capital is almost the usual, it seems like. Here, here, even though we try to discourage cross capital, but we've not been able to put, you know, a, a stop to it. Take, for example, um, um, the Constitution allows you, even on the floor of the Senate, to cross carpet, provided mm -hmm. there is crisis in your party. And the Supreme Court has interpreted what crisis means in a political party, not local crisis, a crisis, you know, a national crisis at the party mm -hmm. that would ordinarily, you know, create faction in the party. And then, but, who is to declare the seats of that decamping senator or House of Rep member, or honorable member of the House, vacant? The Speaker. Right. And um, in such cases, where even the Speaker himself decamped to another party, can the Speaker, in all honesty, declare his own seat vacant, or, or declare the seat of a member who decamped with him? And then, secondly, you find situation where, the, even though the Supreme Court had heard that uh, the mandates in Nigeria, presidential system of government, mandate belongs to the political party mm -hmm. because there are no independent candidature. But we see a situation where a governor would decamp and still hold on tenaciously to that mandate because he ordinarily is holding that mandate in trust for the political party on which he contested. You see a governor decamp and he, he, he holds on to that um, uh, mandate. We've seen it happen you know, across board, mm -hmm. you know, both parties have benefited from it. And we, we, the Supreme Court would have had opportunity of deciding the matter one way or the other. And that's why for me, I think that um, APC is just getting its comeuppance from, you know, some of the issues they benefited from PDP. PDP. If you remember in 2000 and pre 2014, you had the likes of Amechi, Saraki and co leaving PDP to join the APC. Right. The PDP went to court to challenge that decamping. And, but the matter was warehoused in court and didn't allow the court to have a bite of it. And after the election, it became an academic exercise. And mm -hmm. so we didn't have the opportunity of having you know, a conclusion on the position of the law as regards a governor who had decamped, even though for the uh, uh, parliamentarians, you know, the position of the law is very clear. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why you saw also that just before the 2019 election, some people who decamped from PDP to APC, you know, the moment they had issues in PDP, they all moved, in APC, they all moved back into PDP. Some of them were already sitting governors, somebody like Tambua, somebody like Autumn of Benue State. Mm -hmm. And today, 
we also have a governor who was voted on, on, on the platform of APC, that's Governor Baseki, who had moved into PDP. So you can't truly, why I'm, I'm, I'm taking time to explain all of this, is that you can't truly have a basis for comparison between the American political party system and Nigerian political party system, and apart from the fact that we both have a presidential system okay. of government. On the use of what you've just said, um, the question now, the next question for me would be, do we have a clear political ideology or it's a question of our leaders not being able to interpret it or articulate it clearly? The only clear political ideology that also run through the veins of both political party is the quest for power. And political parties are formed, you know, by people of ideology to you know, grab power. Mm -hmm. For here, the only ideology, if you can call it an ideology, is the quest for power. And that's why, but every other thing apart from that, what we know as political ideologies, that okay, this party is pro development. Like in the first republic, you had five political parties in, in 1979, even though they became six in 1981 in 19, um, or so. Those five political parties had different ideologies. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for the MPN then, they are, they are, the, the main plank of their campaign and ideologies was, you know, housing. And um, they were more, a little bit conservative in their approach. And they also, their plank, the plank of their manifestos were about housing and uh, um, agricultural, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, empowerment mm -hmm. for the MPN the MPN the UPN was a, a, was more like a socialist party you know and then theirs was about education and and so at that point you could still identify that you know some form some form of ideology mm -hmm. and and if you remember the GMPP the great Nigerian people's party at that time even till day they still call the leader Alaji Ibrahim Waziri you know the man who propagated politics without bitterness mm -hmm. but today ask ask any political scholar what is the difference between APC and PDP they can't even tell you All even right. from their manifestos and their constitution they copied from, uh, it's the same people that drafted the constitution. <laughs> All right, hold your thoughts there, Libras. We have uh, Achi Kechu there on the line, who is also a political analyst, to join in this conversation. Good morning, Mr. Chude. Yeah, good morning, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I believe you're following our conversation. So we are talking about political ideology, uh, ideologies, I beg your pardon. Uh, do you agree uh, with Libras? I don't know whether you have heard most part of what he said, that... Our political leaders don't have a clear ideology. As such, we, we are not even sure whether the problem is understanding it or interpret, uh, interpreting or articulating them clearly to Nigerians. What's your thought? When, um, at least, um, I think it's good that liberals have said that they do not have a clear ideology. That would also mean that um, there's some form of ideology uh, that uh, you know, it, that informs their action. If you look at the basic uh, meaning of an ideology, you have a better understanding, a better sense of what is happening in the country today. Um, you, uh, ideology is basically a set of values, ideas that exist in time and space that determine the behavior and engagement of individuals or groups. And it is this lens, it is the lens through which we first use the word. It shapes our thoughts, actions, and interactions. So what it means is that everything that we do as human beings must be motivated by our sense of values and the ideas that we have and that we espouse. As it is with individuals, so also it is with associations and groups and governments. So even when you have a family, a village meetings or town meetings and the rest, they are motivated by a certain kind of ideology. They want the welfare of their communities and they work towards the welfare of their community. This is a sense of values, mm -hmm. a spouse. But, but, uh, so, for a political party, yeah. even for looking at the provision of the Nigerian Constitution, in a way, the, the constitution of this country imposes the duty of having clear cut ideologies on political powers political parties that will take power. Because for the constitution to insist that the primary reason for government 
is the welfare and the security of, of the people. It means that anybody, any group of people, any political party that is in charge of this country must have a set of values that are aimed at causing the interest, the welfare, and the security of the citizens of this country. Chuda, if I may this ask you, if I, if I may interject and ask you, if our leaders are doing what they need to do, why do we need to struggle to understand or interpret their ideologies? Why is it important that we can identify, you know, the ideologies for this party? If they, for instance, fix our road and sort out electricity and so on, would there be any need to be, be taking time to understand what ideolo ideologies they hold? A man without a sense of values, a man without, without um, ideas, you know, it's like, it's like a ship that's floating in a big uh, blue ocean without any sense of direction, which is rudderless. You know, so in a way, you know, like a ship that has a rudder that gives, you know, uh, a ship direction, which is a certain sense of vision, a certain sense of, you know, that emanates from a sense of values and ideas that actually determine whether a man is capable of certain action. So it is not possible, for instance, for a man to decide to build roads, to decide to you know, provide housing for the people, if he is not powered by a set of values that 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 put him in a position where he believes that these are the things that he ought to do. You know, so there is no way you can run the political party, you can run an association without having a set of values and ideas. And I'll just tell you, if you put some of the big corporate organizations, even in the country that you know, that you know, you will see where they wrote, where, where they write clearly mm -hmm. mission, mission statement, or mission statement. Now right. now this thing incorporates the values and the ideas of the organization. Mm. You understand know, this in a way you know provides the ideological compass under which the company operates. So you must have that even especially also with the political party. And so when we say that they do not have a clear set of visions, you know, what we are saying is this, it is not as if a man is completely without 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 any set of values at all. A man could have a nihilistic set of values, values that are detrimental to the welfare, the interests of, of the state. For instance, because when you use the word ideology, it is not necessarily a positive term. Neither is it a negative term. But it could go both ways, depending on the nature and the character of the, you know, of, of the set of values of the person. Mm -hmm. And that's why you could have, for instance, you know, um, uh, a racist ideology. It's an ideology. Apartheid. Apartheid, you know, was a system that was based on a racist ideology. Some of the religious fundamentalism that you see today, whether it's Islamic fundamentalism or any other kind of religious fundamentalism, mm -hmm. is based on a particular ideology. All right, Chude. So, so um, Libros is still here. Chude, sorry. I, I want to thank you. Let me just give Libros opportunity to also uh, chip in before we progress with the news. Uh, thank you very much, Chude. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, you, Libros. you see... You, you very find, quickly. Yeah, you find out that um, even the Constitution you know, provide in Chapter 2, fundamental objective and directive of state policies, provide in Chapter 2 the bedrock of these ideologies that, you know, it should be between from social ideologies, economic ideologies, political ideologies. This had, should be the reason mm -hmm. for government. And any political manifestos should be weaved around those sets of values. But the problem is that you cannot, in all honesty, now say the reasons, sorry, to not answer that your question that you asked, why do we need to know? Some of the things that we, you know, clap for government for are not sets of ideologies. They are ordinary, you, you know, um, they are ordinary issues that government should handle for you. Mm -hmm. Why you need clear cut ideology? So when you're voting for a political party, you know, if this party is about, you, if, the set of ideology for the, for the political party is about industrialization. These are people who believe that the, to move any nation, you need this industrialization. If you believe in those set of values, you, go vote you can to those go people. strictly for those people. Mm -hmm. And some people who believe that, look, to develop any nation, you need agriculture and, you know, 
value added agriculture. You don't say no, I, dis I disagree with industrialization. I'll go for this I one. go for this one. A third one, pro people. Essentially, that the human capital it helps you mm -hmm. to make a decision. That's basically it. All right.